Hello everyone and welcome to Utah State University. My name is Dr. Jayron Hassan and I'm the flute professor. Thank you for tuning in today to learn more about the 2024-2025 Utah Flute All-State Etude. Before I perform the etude in its entirety, it is important to be aware of the keys utilized. We have two key changes. The first section, Allegretto Agitato, begins in G minor, specifically the harmonic version of the scale. The Moderato Cantabile is a minor version of G major, which is why you see some additional accidentals. Making sure that each section is in its appropriate key is crucial. Here are what the two scales sound like. Also, it is important to note the tempo markings of the two mini movements as your understanding of the Italian terminology will change the way you perform the etude. Here are my recommendations for the Allegretto Agitato. Watch out for the variety of dynamics in this movement and etude overall. At the beginning, we are marked piano, a great way to practice this first rhythm to ensure rhythmic accuracy is to fill in the 16th notes. For example, in the first two bars, you will play three Gs, one A tied to the G, an additional two repeated Gs, and so on. The purpose of this exercise is to fill in all of the 16th notes to fill in the entirety of the beat, knowing its full length. This is what the exercise sounds like. This is what it sounds like slower and alternated between the exercise I recommended and what's actually written. I'm always still thinking about the 16th notes filling in the entire beat. This rhythm is featured quite often in this etude, and ensuring the rhythmic accuracy from the beginning of your practice routine will make playing this etude a lot easier. In bar three, the triplet figure can often cause uneven fingers. One way to practice this is to practice Toffanel and Gobert exercise number 17 from the daily exercises. This exercise is all about the trill, especially for trills that require the usage of a weak finger, such as your pinky in this case. In preparation for the same figure up an octave, such as in bar nine, there are two ways of executing the triplet. You can either use your second trill key on the right hand or play it with the pinky on the left hand. Either option works fine. 
Personally, I prefer using the left hand pinky to keep everything on my left hand without worrying about coordinating timing with the right hand. For the left hand option, the E flat will not be played with the first finger down. For the right hand trill option, the E flat will be supplemented by the trill, so no fingers change here either. In bars 11 and similar instances, make sure you keep the tempo and the timing through the eighth note rests without slowing down or taking too much time to breathe. Sometimes we anticipate the eighth note rests to last a little longer than they actually do. Another thing to watch out for is the octave E flat in bar 18. Ensure that to start, the first finger on the left hand is up for the middle register and then down for the upper register. Lastly, add in mini crescendos and decrescendos in bar 23 to help with the lower register phrasing. Crescendo through the low D, E flat D, diminuendo as the notes ascend towards the F sharp and repeat the pattern in the next bar. This helps to balance the voicing. In this first opening phrase, intonation and phrasing through the intervals is very important. In measure 26, pay attention to the intonation of the octave Ds. Keeping an intentional rhythm through the ties of the triplet eighths will help to keep the flow of the phrase. Another intonation spot to be careful of is the end of bar 27 between the C sharp to the D. Keep your air moving through this and don't let the lower notes play too low will help to keep this ending in tune. As you move to measure 28, sing on the high G and crescendo through to the C sharp to ensure the interval is well balanced. The same can be applied for the following bars, D to F sharp interval. At the end of 29, ensure that the E flat is well supported intonation and air support wise. A trick to start the next bar on the piano C sharp, bar 30, is to enter a tiny bit early and really establish the C sharp before you move on to the next note. Thinking about a slower airstream with a focused tone during this section will make it easier to play these lower notes. Do not change the embouchure and keep the air speed consistent through these notes. In measure 32, don't be afraid to use your full supported forte on the high A. This is an opportunity for you to showcase your upper register, but do watch out for the intonation at the end of the bar between the octave Ds, ensuring the last D is not out of tune, and similarly for the octave D at the end of 33. When the Allegretto section returns, all of the previous information will remain the same but one added note is in bar 42. Elongate the first low D to ensure that your embouchure and tone are prepared to play and then move on through the triplets. Overall, a few main things to consider in this etude are dynamic contrast, intonation, and rhythmic accuracy. Good luck and thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at j.hassan at usu.edu. Thank you.